In this lesson, we're diving into advanced variable options in Figma. We'll explore how to use multi-select and individual select with checkboxes and variables. To demonstrate this, we'll create a real-world example latest orders history table. You'll learn how to select multiple rows and display the number of elected items dynamically. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to Figma Fusion Studio. I have a draft design here, a latest orders history table with relevant details. The last column includes an arrow to indicate that an accordion is part of the row, along with additional options under a more menu. In the top right corner, there's a section displaying the number of selected items and an action menu. This selection count and menu should update dynamically based on user selection. The main focus is our first column, which contains checkboxes. At the top, we have select all checkbox when clicked. It should select or deselect all rows. Each row also has an individual checkbox that allows users to select or deselect rows independently. The selection should dynamically update the total count action menu. Let's dive into the checkbox setup. Here, I have three sets of checkboxes. The reason for structuring it this way is that in a proper design system, checkboxes are part of a reusable component. If we directly add the select all interaction to the parent checkbox, it could impact other places where checkboxes are used. This way, we keep the interaction isolated while maintaining consistency across the design system. The second checkbox is for individual row selection, where users can select or deselect a row. This is defined using a true or false state, which you might already be familiar with. The last set of checkboxes is for the select all functionality. Here, we introduce an additional neutral state. For example, if not all rows are selected, we can't indicate this checkbox is fully selected. In such cases, we use a neutral state to represent a partially selected status. Here, we also use a true or false condition to manage the neutral and selected states. I have defined each checkbox value using local variables. Let's go to the local variables section. Here, I have already defined values for row 1 to row 10, each as a Boolean variable. Since our checkboxes follow a true or false state, we need to maintain the same logic here. Currently, all rows are set to false. Based on selection, these values will turn true. I'll demonstrate this once we assign them to the checkboxes. Based on the selection, the number of selected items and the action options should be displayed dynamically. For this, I have added a select option variable, which is initially set to false. For the select all checkbox, there are two states, checked and neutral. So I have defined two separate Boolean variables for these states as well. As the last item, we have two numbers. One, total rows. This represents the total number of rows available. Since I have 10 different rows, I have defined the total as 10. Two. Selected rows, this number should dynamically change based on the selection. We need to update this variable whenever a row is selected or deselected. Additionally, we will set conditions based on the selected rows count. Once we assign the variables, you'll clearly see how it works. Next, I'll assign variables to our items. First, select an individual checkbox. In the right side panel, under the component name, you'll see the toggle option. On the right side, there's an icon to assign a variable. Click on it and search for row 1 since we're assigning it for row 1. Repeat the same process for all 10 rows ensuring that each row is assigned the correct variable. Make sure all values are properly assigned to avoid any issues in functionality. Now that we have assigned all the individual variables, let's test if they're working correctly. Go to local variables and manually set all 10 checkboxes to true. And check if the checkboxes are reflecting the correct state in the design. If everything is assigned properly, switch all checkboxes back to false to reset them. This step ensures that the checkboxes are correctly linked to their respective variables before moving forward. Now, Let's assign select all and neutral variables. Select the select all checkbox in the design. Click on the variable icon and search for select all. 
assign the select all variable to this checkbox. Select the neutral state checkbox. Click on the variable icon and assign it to the neutral variable. Now, let's verify if the select all and neutral variable are assigned correctly. If everything updates as expected, then the assignment is correct. If not, recheck variable bindings and make sure each state is properly linked. Now, let's verify if the selected number and visibility control are assigned correctly. Select the text element displaying the selected count. In the right side panel next to the text name, click on the variable icon and assign the selected row variable to it. Control visibility of the action menu. Select the wrapper container of the action menu. In the appearance section, click on the eye icon and assign it to the action option variable, which is set to false initially. Since it's false, the action menu will be hidden by default. Next, test the assignments. Go to local variables and set action option to true and confirm that the action menu appears. Change the selected row count to a number greater than zero. If everything updates dynamically as expected, the setup is correct. Now comes the crucial part setting interactions using set variable and conditionals to make the selection dynamic. Step 1. Set interaction for select all option. Go to the main checkbox component the Select All checkbox. Click on the default state and switch to prototype mode. Click plus icon, add interaction in set. Action, set variable. Target, row one. Value, true. Repeat this process for all 10 rows, ensuring each row is correctly targeted. This means when Select All is clicked, all checkboxes will be set to true. Now that we have set interactions for all 10 rows, the next steps involve refining the logic for select all, neutral state, and visibility control. Step 2. Update select all neutral state. Set select all to true. This ensures that when all rows are selected, the select all checkbox remains in the checked state. Set neutral to false. If not all rows are elected, we need to ensure the neutral state is not applied. Step 3. Action Option Visibility Control Select the Action Option Wrapper In Prototype Mode, Add Interaction Action Set Variable Target Action Option Option Value True This means that the action options will become visible. Step 4. Update Selected Row Count Set Selected Row Count to update dynamically based on the election. Assign total rows, 10, since we have 10 rows. This ensures the count updates in real time as rows are selected or deselected. Now, let's test it in preview mode to ensure everything is working smoothly. Now that the select all functionality is working as expected. Now that we have set interactions for deselect all. Step 1. Update each row selection. Set each row's value to false. This ensures that all checkboxes are unchecked when deselect all is clicked. Step 2. Update select all neutral state. Set select all to false ensures the main checkbox is unchecked. Set neutral to false since no rows are selected, the neutral state should not be applied. Step 3. Hide action options reset counter. Set action option visibility to false ensures the action buttons are hidden when no rows are selected. Set selected row count 0 since no checkboxes are selected, the counter resets to 0. Check in preview mode. Test selecting all rows, action options, and count update correctly. Test deselecting all rows. Everything resets as expected. Looks like select all to select all is working perfectly. Next, we need to update the neutral state in the same way as the deselect all functions. 
For now, it's best to add all interactions manually, as it helps in the learning process. You have two options. 1. Manually add all interactions for the neutral state. 2. Duplicate the check state and modify the neutral state, because it is same like deselect all function. Based on my research and understanding, clicking on the neutral state should deselect all checkboxes, ensuring that no rows remain selected. There's no need to check the preview mode at this stage because the neutral state will only appear when at least one individual checkbox is selected. It won't be visible unless some rows are selected, so we can confer its functionality just by reviewing the logic. Until now, we just worked with set variables, which is pretty straightforward. Next, we need to handle individual selection logic, which is a bit more complex. Make sure to follow the conditions precisely, or else the functionality might break. Setting up individual selection. Select the default checkbox and go to prototype mode. Add an interaction, set variable, target. Selected row. Value, selected row plus one. This means we initially set selected row to zero, and with each selection, one is added to the count. Now, we need to add conditional logic to handle different states. Steps. Click on the plus icon and select conditional. Set the condition, selected row is equal to zero. If true, apply the following. Set select old to false. Set select neutral to false. Set action option to false. This ensures that when no rows are selected, the select all and neutral states are reset and the action options are hidden. When at least one row is selected, we need to update the UI accordingly. Steps. Click on the plus icon and select conditional. Set the condition, selected row greater than or equal to one. If true, apply the following changes. Set select all to false. This ensures that select all is not activated. Set select neutral. To true, the checkbox enters a neutral state, since not all rows are selected. Set action option to true. The action menu becomes visible. What this means, if at least one row is selected of not all, the select all checkbox should show a neutral state instead of being fully checked. The action options should be enabled, allowing the user to perform actions on the selected item. When the last remaining checkbox is selected, we need to update a UI to reflect that all items are now selected. Steps. Click on the plus icon and select conditional. Set the condition. Selected draw total row. If true, apply following changes. Set select all to true. This means all rows are selected, so the select all checkbox should be fully checked. Set select neutral to false since all rows are selected. The neutral state is no longer needed. Set action option to true. The action menu should remain visible. What this means? When the last unchecked row is selected, the system should automatically recognize that all rows are now selected, updating the select all checkbox accordingly. The neutral state is removed because there is no mix of selected and unselected item. As the last action in a check setup, select change to interaction, set active state to true. What this mean? This ensures that when all conditions are met, the checkbox transitions into an active selected state it visually confirms to the user that their selection is successfully applied. The interaction flow is now fully functional, owing smooth selection and deselection of rows. Now everything should work as expected in preview mode. Now that select all, deselect all, and individual select are working, the next step is to configure individual deselect. Steps to implement. Select the check state checkbox. Go to prototype mode. 
Select set variable. Target. Select a draw. Set value. Select a draw minus one. What this mean? When a checkbox is deselected, we decrease the selected row count by one. This ensures that the number of selected items updates dynamically. Next, we'll apply conditional logic to manage the deselection behavior properly. Click on the plus icon and select conditional. Set the condition. Selected row equal to zero. If true, apply the following. Set selectal to false. Set select neutral to false. Set action option to false. What this means, when the last selected checkbox is deselected, it recess everything. The select all checkbox get unchecked. The neutral state disappears. The action options like delete are hidden. Next, we'll handle the condition when some checkboxes are still selected. Click on the plus icon and select conditional. Set the condition, select a row greater than or equal to one. If true, apply the following. Set select goal to false. Since not all items are selected, select all shouldn't be checked. Set select neutral to true. The checkbox enters a neutral state because only some rows are selected. Set action option to true. Since at least one item is selected, the action options should remain visible. This ensures that the deselecting logic works correctly while maintaining the proper visual state. Final step, change state to false. The last step is to change the checkbox state to false when an item is deselected. This ensures that the row is visually updated and behaves correctly within the selection logic. Select change to Set active false. Now, when a row is deselected, it properly updates the selection state while maintaining the right conditions for select all, neutral state, and action options. Now, let's test everything in preview mode to ensure all interactions are working as expected. What to check? Select all, deselect all should toggle all checkboxes correctly. Individual selection should update the count and stay dynamically. Neutral state should appear when some, but not all, rows are selected. Action options should show hide based on selection. Deselection logic should properly decrease the count and update condition. Everything is working as expected. Now, we have a fully functional multi-select system using Figma variables and condition. You might notice that the button text is not visible. This is due to a latest Figma update issue. When adding a component inside a Boolean property, Fema is removing it. Even when the component is enabled, it doesn't work as expected. Previously, it was only hidden, but now it's completely removed. This is causing multiple issues in our design workflow. Components that rely on Boolean toggles are braying. Hoping Sigma addresses this issue in the next update to restore expected behavior. I've uploaded this source file to Figma community, hoping it will be helpful for everyone. Make a copy of the file and try it out yourself. Experiment with this setup and see how it works in real time. This method works seamlessly across all fonts and design systems. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Stay tuned for more Figma tips and tricks. Happy designing!